Hi everybody, it is March 13, 2019. I have said this in videos addressing the Syrian people, addressing the Iraqis, addressing Libyans. Now I address Venezuelans. To you, the Venezuelan people, I am so sorry that you have had to suffer for decades the sanctions put on you by our US government. I am so sorry that you have had to suffer the consequences of our quote-unquote leaders who are nothing but criminal, murderous, thugs, psychopathic, narcissistic, out to steal the resources. Now, your oil here in, in Venezuela as we have stolen the resources of many civilians who live in sovereign nations, but when you have these people like Trump that they take their orders, they are the puppets of those behind the curtains, but they have the tools, they have the power to bring nations to their knees because they're all about getting the agenda done. Trump does not care about you. Trump cares about getting the job done for those criminals who feel they have, they're entitled to bring a nation to its knees so that they can steal resources of that nation. It's obvious, it's clear. And in fact, in your case, Trump has made what used to be overt CIA infiltration into sovereign nations to bring it to its knees and uh, oust the leader so that they can put in a U.S. puppet that will just say yes to whatever the United States wants. In this case, Venezuela, Trump has brought it right out in the open, overt. I want to get the job done and he does not care. All of the lies here in our country are obvious now. Unfortunately, the majority of the American people don't care. We have a very immature, immature people that are immoral. Oh, they love to live the delusion that they're good, decent human beings. And they love to live this delusion like we have a government, like these people in positions of power, they love to live the delusion as if they've elected them. Oh, because we do that you know, whole um, charade. I mean, it's like, oh, election day, get out and vote. What, are you, you're not voting? Oh, you're un-American. It's so silly. It's like we're all in seventh grade, young, 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 immature. And we're all about ourselves here in the great nation of the United States, yes. The delusion of the American people thinking that they're good and morally superior when nothing demonstrates any of that. Nothing could be further from the truth if you just watch how Americans live. They like to believe that they're caring and compassionate, compassionate and they do nothing to demonstrate it. They live an extremely immature, self-centered life walking the low road, just believing that they're above everybody else. We have immature, psychopathic, quote-unquote leaders. We have them over and over and over again. How could that be? Because the American people allow it, permit it, consent to it. So, after you, Venezuela, there'll be another country. But what I am really afraid of 
is just from the last couple of days action that has been taken and our quote unquote leaders what they are saying that this guy Trump who is truly an evil psychopath and will not stop until he gets the job done I am afraid that he may be about to take military action against your country whether that will be via the uh, legitimate military forces that we have here in our country, the U.S. military, or it may be the paramilitary forces that our Pentagon spends billions of dollars on, paramilitary vo uh, forces going into your country. I, I think, I have no doubt that they're there now. During your blackout, 21, 21 murders and apparently it was well what mainstream media is telling us is that they were Guido supporters the murders are blamed on Maduro we get lie after lie after lie after lie but we've been getting these lies my entire life 60 years of lies and I have recognized not, uh, it wasn't a recent recognition. I've known this for decades, that the American people accept every lie they're fed. And then when they find out that they've been lied to, they do nothing, nothing at all to demand. The liars get out and let's have some honest people rule us. Yes, American people like the, their leaders. Look, we're children here and children can't do anything to help you. So unfortunately, these lies are going to persist. More dab damage is coming to your country and I am so sorry that you have to endure this. On Monday, Pompeo hinted at the Trump regime upping the stakes in Venezuela, saying that the United States is drawing a clear line between those who aid Venezuela, the Bolivarian Republic, and those supporting U.S. aims in the country. He falsely blamed Maduro for U.S. sabotage to Venezuela's electrical grid, causing continuing widespread blackout conditions, a problem much more serious than initially believed, likely requiring considerable time, effort, and expertise to correct entirely. He lied, claiming patients are dying in hospitals, telecommunications entirely collapsing. Maduro had backed up generators installed in all Venezuelan hospitals to maintain operations in case of power outages. When the electrical grid was sabotaged last Thursday, backup generators were automatically activated. Venezuelan communication minister um, is it Jorge or is it George? I'm sorry. Rodriguez explained Pompeo slammed Cuba and Russia for what he called undermining the democratic dreams of the Venezuelan people and their welfare. We, it's too, too obvious now that we have our quote-unquote leaders saying things that are so disgustingly untrue. And yet, you hear very little from the American people about this. We are so saturated in filth, in disgust, in lies here in the United States that to lift an American up out of that filth and disgust because it's the acceptance of all of this decades and decades and decades long the acceptance of having psychopaths quote unquote rule us the acceptance of all of the lies the acceptance of killing people in other countries innocent people the acceptance of our murderous thugs in Washington DC that has permitted this you can't 
we can't lift the American people up to care about anything, even their own selves, because they're not acting in their own best interest. We're being taken over. We have been taken over. Our country is being destroyed by those quote-unquote representatives of the American people. It's obvious now, and the American people are too self-centered to do anything at all except live the immediate gratification they get from the entertainment, from their cell phones, from the internet, from TV, to do anything. We have our own constitutional rights being obliterated every single day. We get more and more evidence that the American people are the enemy. Our Constitution has been dead for a long time. The American people don't care. Yeah, it's um, so we are suffering the consequences here of the evil that we have that we have exacted on so many different countries. And well, when you allow that evil. It will, it will, it will begin to eat you up, and it's eating us up now. And we can't even get American people to care about Americans, so they're certainly not going to care about you in Venezuela. And I'm just so sorry that all of this is taking place. So Pompeo slammed Cuba and Russia. Oh God, I can't even read that again. It's so sick. As if Pompeo cares about your democratic dreams as if the American people could believe the horseshit that we're bringing democracy to so many different nations that well they have those uh, murderous dictators gotta get rid of them for the people <laughs> and you know I don't mean to laugh because it's not funny but it's a, it's a, it's a cruel joke at this point the real cruelty, though, is that the American people allow it to continue. He turned reality on its head, claiming Cuba is the true imperialist power in Venezuela, training Venezuelans secret police and torture tactics, domestic spying techniques, and the mechanisms of Repression, the Cuban authorities have wielded against their own people for decades, adding Cuban security forces have displayed, displaced Venezuelan security forces in a clear violation of Venezuelan sovereignty. Cuba and Maduro disdain private property rights, the rule of law, and the free and fair elections. They routinely violate the basic human rights of the people. <laughs> Jesus. Well, Bolton, you know, we're going to be taking over Cuba and Nicaragua and Venezuela because they're the troika of tyranny. No, the tyranny is right here. The tyranny that is imposed by people like Trump and Pompeo and Bolton and Mark Rubio and all of those in Congress and in the White House. See, the American people are blind, and they don't really want to see what is happening, even in their own neighborhood. They don't want to see it. They just want to live comfortably. Don't bother me. Oh, I'm good, and I'm compassionate, and I'm caring, but don't bother me. I just want to continue believing the horseshit fed to me by mainstream media and our government officials and our great leader in the White House. I just want to believe all of the lies that they tell. And that's as far as it goes. Cuba's leading exports to Venezuela and other countries are goodwill, doctors, teachers, Washington's leading experts are mass slaughter, destruction, and human misery. Trump hardliners target both countries for regime change along with Nicaragua, regionally, what Bolton last no November called a troika of tyranny for their sovereign independence. He, Pompeo Abrams, and Donald Trump 
want eliminated. These countries transformed into U.S. vassal states. And damn it, we have not been able to do it for two decades, so I'm going to get the job done. What the press hides from you about Venezuela. Venezuelans don't need to read this. You Americans need to read this. 3 August 28, the UN's General Assembly received the report from the UN's independent expert on the promotion of a democratic and equitable international order. Venezuela, Ecuador. But see, here, we can't get Americans to do anything. You know, to so many of us have sent evidence uh, that our own country is being taken over. Americans don't care. So how do we get them to care about what's happening in Venezuela? We're tied. Our hands are tied when dealing with a population that are children, adult children, who really just want to have fun. So you can read. Uh, I'll link below to everything. If there is an American out there that doesn't know what's going on in Venezuela, you might want to pay attention. Do some research. Click on the links below. Read about what is taking place. January 26, Britain's independent headlined Venezuela crisis, former UN Rapporteur says U.S. sanctions are killing uh, citizens. And I believe that may have been the only mainstream media publication that actually wrote about what the UN Rapporteur had to say. Former Special Rapporteur Alfred de Zayas. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced the name who finished his term at the United Nations in March, has criticized the U.S. for engaging in economic warfare against Venezuela when he said this is hurting the economy and killing Venezuelans. So much that the American people were fed lies. We don't get the information that we need to make an informed decision. But the truth is that not only are Americans self-centered and only care about their own little life, they're also lazy. So it's easy to just continue accepting all of the lies that they hear rather than take a step back and do some research on their own to find out what the truth is. January 23rd, Germany's uh, Dizit, um, sure I mispronounced that. Okay, what was stated? A senior judge has resigned from one of the United Nations International Courts in The Hague citing shocking, shocking political interference from the White House and Turkey. The judge criticized Bolton stating the American security advisor held his speech at the time when The Hague was planning preliminary investigations into American soldiers who had been accused of torturing people in Afghanistan. The American threats against international judges clearly show the new political climate. It is shocking. I had never heard such a threat. Um, and Flug said that the judges on the court had been stunned that the U.S. would roll out such heavy artillery. Yes, we are a criminal nation. Uh, we're above the law, so we get to do whatever it is that we want to do to other nations. There is no nation. I'll wait for the dogs to pass. I'm sorry for the interruption, and I can't remember what I was saying, but does it really matter what I say? No, it really doesn't. You know, for decades, I've been trying to get to my truth, the truth, uh, you know, the, the 
collective truth, the truth of our country, the truth, just the truth of life. And it has been a battle. And even those who I called friends were really only interested in their own little life, claiming to care, claiming compassion, but they didn't demonstrate it. A few, a few of my friends were ethical, but still we were all so trapped in the matrix. And even myself for years claimed to be caring and compassionate, but it was only until I did that painful work of self-reflection that I realized that I was full of shit. But trying to get Americans to do that work, they won't. As long as they're comfortable, they won't. So this judge from the UN International Criminal Court said, um, that It is consistent with the new American line. We are number one and we stand above the law. The law, sorry. February 6th, a former UK ambassador to Syria vented on 21st Century Wire stating this, a guide to decoding the doublespeak on Syria. And he brazenly exposed there at 21st Century Wire the doublespeak newspeak that the US government and press, mainstream media, what he called America's frothing neocons and their liberal interventionist fellow travelers. Yes, but it's all obvious now. And you would hope that the American people would do what's right, but that means they would have to change. And we're not about change. Oh, we're about clapping when one of those psychopathic leaders say, hope and change, hope and change. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Oh, and I hear that Guaido has uh, gotten Venezuelans to say, oh, sorry about the noise. God. Amazing. We, we don't even care about each other. You know, Americans don't even care about each other. They don't care about their effect. Their effect that they have on other people. It's, uh, this is not a one-time happening, the noise that you've been hearing. It's an every day and every night occurrence. So, yeah, if we can't care about each other, if we don't care about our own selves, then whatever is coming to you, I certainly denounce. But how can the public in a country such as the United States democratically control the government if the government and its press are lying to them like that all the time and so routinely? Guess what? The American people know they are being lied to. They don't care. We know it now. You know, the viewership of mainstream media, news, cable news, Network news has dropped considerably, considerably. They don't care that they're being lied to. And I know that firsthand because I had a whole lot of conversations with my social network of friends. They didn't care. And what was shocking was during the Bush and Cheney years, 
they were so upset about the lies told by that administration, so upset we were lied to to get us into war in Iraq, so upset that they were actually during dinner parties saying they need to be hung. Obama comes into office and suddenly I'm a conspiracy theorist when I'm pointing out all of his lies and that, well, Obama was an extension of the Bush, the Obama administration, an ex extension of the Bush administration. They did not care. So I realized then, wow, they don't care about the truth. They only care about their team. And that's where we are. The majority of the Americans only care about their team. The same thing that I saw with my social network of friends during the Obama years, I'm now seeing it with the Trump supporters, the quote-unquote awake crowd, the quote-unquote truthers that care about their team. With Trump in office, so when you post, you now the Syrians did this, an open letter to the American people had no effect. This will have no effect. Venezuelan social movements appeal to the world to condemn U.S. crimes against humanity. Oh, I'd love it to have an effect. To denounce the U.S. government for launching cybernetic weapons and electro, uh, electromagnetic pulse weapons against our nation, causing a blackout throughout the country on March 7. Yes, it was a ruthless act of war, and it has caused serious problems. Uh, just because you have uh, generators in your hospitals doesn't mean that everything is flowing as normal when you had the electricity on. So it causes serious problems in hospitals, maternity wards, uh, communication networks, drinking water, distribution networks and sanitation systems, financial and commercial systems. Oh, man. Transportation networks not to mention the impact on millions of Venezuelan families on their daily lives. We demand that this action against a civilian population should be treated as a state crime against humanity perpetrated by the government of Donald Trump, considering the connection that has been made public and communicated by political actors linked to his administration and political base. We know that this attack originates from the need for the U.S. to take control of our oil. And for this, they are determined to make our people suffer. As Mark Rubio, Mike Pompeo, John Bolton, Elliot Abrams, Mike Pence, and Donald Trump have all declared. That's right. See, we're the great United States. So, it doesn't matter. You're a sovereign nation. We get to decide your fate. Don't you know? We're number one. We're above the law. We get to decide your fate. This arrogance, this violent arrogance has been a staple of the American people as well as the American government since its inception, since the genesis of this country, of violent arrogance. We get to take what we want. We're entitled. Oh, because... <sighs> Yeah, in the beginning it was God ordained in the name of Christ. We get to steal land. We get to rape and pillage. And then we get to claim it's the victims that have been murdered, raped, pillaged. Their children stolen. Their land stolen. Everything stolen from them. We get to point the finger at the victim. That's how we roll. That's how we have been rolling since day one. So, of course, when you cannot resolve any of the uh, contradictions that you live, if you can't resolve the hypocrisy if you can't resolve the lies being told, 
all of it only gets worse. It begins to spread inward. And now we're destroying our own. I will link below to this, uh, the last American Vagabond, his video, his last video. I highly recommend that you check out his channel because he is posting on uh, a lot of the crimes that our U.S. government is involved with. Also pointing out our mainstream media like the New York Times expose on the lies about burning aid trucks in Venezuela shows how U.S. government and media spread pro-war propaganda. You know, the American people didn't even care that we repealed an act that was that had constrained our government our military from using propaganda against the American people it was repealed that act smith Munt act during the Obama years repealed to allow the use of propaganda against the American people and they didn't care they had their fourth right, uh, their fourth amendment taken away from them. They didn't care. So, the New York Times has been behind virtually every coup, but certainly I think the last 12 coups that we have um, undertaken which have been rather covert. Now, well, in order to get to the truth of what was happening in so many countries, um, South American countries, Central American countries, we had to dig for it. Now, it's right out in the open. We don't have to dig anymore. And yet, the American people never change. So, the New York Times, our mainstream media promotes war for our military industrial complex. Everything's about profit. The burning of the aid trucks was actually committed by Guaido thugs, not Maduro thugs. But the New York Times, well, puts out the whole lie. And the New York Times is still regarded as, oh, you know, this, uh, the quintessential publication to get the truth. Really, it's true. And the American people um, love to have the New York Times underneath their arms to show, oh, I'm smart and I'm educated and I'm informed and I read the New York Times. Everything is a pretense here in our country. So what was that? What was what happened to the power in Venezuela? Many are claiming that it was similar to the Stutznet malware computer virus that the U.S. and Israel inflicted upon Iran in 2010. And it's funny how our mainstream media reports how Maduro his neglect and socialism, that's what brought the power down? No. You can listen to this video, Blackstone Intelligence Network, evidence that the Venezuelan power grid was sabotaged. So, now we're pulling our embassy personnel out of Venezuela. Guaido signals foreign intervention in Venezuela as U.S. withdraws diplomats, concerns over the Trump administration's increasingly hostile policy in Venezuela grew Tuesday after Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced the U.S. Was, was withdrawing all diplomatic personnel from the country. Guaido is taking steps uh, to, I guess, reinforce his power and uh, invoke Venezuela's constitutional Article 187, which he claimed allows for an outside country to cooperate or to assist Venezuela in this sense, as we've stated in this article of our Constitution, which empowers me as the person in charge. Wow, it's like this nut job of ours, Nancy Pelosi, claiming she's in charge, and other countries recognizing Nancy Pelosi 
as our president. Now that's a really scary thing, but how much scarier than having Trump? I, it's no, or Clinton. The, the, all of these people are sick, twisted psychopaths. Um, that it, it's been very, very clear in the recent years how sick they are, but we allow them to continue. Both Guaido's escalated rhetoric and Pompeo's move came days before a planned rally outside the White House where thousands of Americans are expected to protest a potential military invasion and regime change in Venezuela. Boy, do I pray that it's big. So Maduro, along with Minister of Communication Jorge Rodriguez, continue to prove, uh, provide evidence that Pompeo and the U.S. authorities were the masterminds behind this very situation, pulling off a cyber attack on the state electric company's computer system at the El Guri hydroelectric plant, resulting in the near nationwide power outage. We're good at destruction here. We're number one. We are number one. We will destroy anyone if they have what we want. Um, you can read this and I have posted videos on Venezuela, many videos showing that your elections were fair and democratic. And I've posted videos on the sanctions leveled against your country. For anybody who doesn't know that Venezuela, the problems that they have been enduring, if you don't know that it has been caused by us, I don't separate myself from our government. So if you do, fine. But don't get upset with me for not. We could get these people out. We could demand better if we stopped playing and grew up and became adults. Venezuela has suffered the effects of the decline in oil prices due to the United States agreement with Saudi Arabia to aggressively increase oil production in order to lower prices and impact important producing countries such as Venezuela, Russia, and Iran. The economy began to deteriorate due to a lack of income and a Miami-based... See, why I like this article is it goes into details. Details are really important. So when you understand the details, you will understand that it's far more than just those sanctions leveled you know, by our government. There has been a very organized financial hit on Venezuela coming from coming from uh, well Miami based company created in 2010 called Dollar Today which artificially devalued the value of the currency in order to start an inflationary escalation um, executive orders by the Obama administration executive orders by Trump more sanctions uh, leveled against Venezuela by Trump uh, had a major impact. The risk rating agencies created by the United States to destabilize sovereign countries, Moody's and uh, there are three others, uh, they were considered, Venezuela was suddenly uh, put on, categorized as high risk, which only complicated the economic problems from the sanctions. There are so many companies, uh, a French financial company, Coface, also um, cataloged Venezuela as the highest country risk in Latin America, similar to African countries that are currently in situations of armed conflict. The study 
was carried out based on the negative ratings of the three major U.S. rating agency standards and poor's, Fitch, and Moody's, largely responsible for the global financial collapse of 2008. From 2015 onwards, the country risk variable began to increase artificially in order to hinder the entry of international financing and until the first half of 2018, these three major rating agencies have stepped up their attacks against Venezuela, omitting the appropriate debt payments in order to push the country towards default and project a situation of insecurity for international investment uh, in this context of siege bays based on social discontent produced by the fall in oil prices, scarcity, shortages, and the wave of looting. The anti-Chavez won the majority in the National Assembly. So with all of um, the efforts so organized, Canada, the uh, European Union, the United States, bankers, um, and risk, credit risk agencies, and so much more. It brought Venezuela to its knees economically. And then you suddenly have people in your country that are pro Guaido. And all of this has been an orchestrated, deliberate attempt, attempt to take over your country. Yes, when people are experiencing hardship, they want change. They want change. So many of you, fortunately, have recognized what is happening to your country. And the change, well, <laughs> we should learn from you. You have changed. You have adapted to these hardships in a rather admirable way where you're rallied together, stand together. You're not fighting over stupid little things like Americans do. Uh, you know, gender and calling people by the right pronoun. Um, You want the sovereignty of your nation, so you're fighting for it. You don't want us in there taking over your country, so you're fighting. And I respect that. There is so much in this one page, one page right here, you will learn about what has been taking place. The private bank, Citibank, J.P. Morgan, because Executive Order 13692 empowered the Treasury Department to use surveillance mechanisms for Venezuela's financial transactions in the United States, which we seized gold seized by Bank of England, your gold, uh, billions seized you don't have access to, then again, million C's you don't have access to. You can't pay your creditors. All because of us. The National Assembly in contempt, your National Assembly, in contempt for incorporating three members whose elections were demonstrably, demonstrably fraudulent, approved legal instruments in May and August that declared no oil contracts, international investments, and the issuance of new debt by the country, thereby attempting to prevent fresh money from entering the coffers of the state. So your National Assembly, the members working against your own sovereignty, they're there as you as puppets to get rid of Maduro because he is not bowing to our demands. So during 2016-2017, Venezuelan accounts in the United States were closed by large private banks such as Citibank and JP Morgan.
we've tied your hands. Exclusive report, summary of the report um, by the Zayas, independent expert of the UN on Venezuela. And what did he say? We don't hear this on mainstream media. We only hear our mainstream media reporters cheerleading for war. This is about how sanctions have affected the fundamental rights of the Venezuelan population. So uh, this independent expert of the United Nations, UN Rapporteur, uh, stated risk rating agencies, mainly Standard & Poor's, Moody's and & Fitch, have permanently issued a negative rating on the Republic's capacity to make external payments, which essentially has closed its possibilities of access to the financial market. The role of international criminal groups in the theft of public resources, food and medicine that reach neighboring countries. This framed him within an economic war that is not far from the non-conventional wars against Cuba, Chile, under Salvador Allende and Nicaragua. The independent expert stressed that the economic sanctions against Venezuela ordered by the United States, Canada, and the European Union contravene the spirit and letter of the Charter of the United Nations because they affect innocent populations. We don't care about you. That's the truth. Trump <laughs> certainly does not care about the Venezuelan people, whether you have a democracy or not. We want your oil, bottom line. And we're going to get it, bottom line. Because we are, hey, the United States. We get to do whatever the hell we want to do. We steal. We have no morals. We are a sick nation, a diseased nation. The effects of the Obama and Trump sanctions, as well as the unilateral measures by Canada and the European Union, have directly and indirectly worsened the shortage of drugs, such as insulin, antiretrovirals, uh, which has caused delays in its distribution and caused aggravation in numerous death cases. According to the report, this type of consequences can be considered as crimes against humanities. humanity. Sanctions. We've, well, maybe some of you in Venezuela didn't hear our fabulous former Secretary of State say, we think it was worth killing, murdering 500,000 Iraqi children. That's what our sanctions did in Iraq. And you know what? Albright. <laughs> Madeline Albright. I, I couldn't think of her name for a second. Madeline Albright. And boy, that was in the days when I had a social network of friends. The liberal progressives, the Democrats, yay, Madeline Albright. I have such respect for her. We think it was worth murdering 500,000 children in Iraq with our sanctions. You can check out his report right here. It will be linked to below. So Trump puts more sanctions. And look at the people listening to this lying sack of shit speak at the United Nations about Venezuela. Watch the reactions of the people. They know full well he is lying through his teeth. We are witnessing, we are witnessing a human, a human tragedy, tragedy as an as example. An example. In Venezuela. in Venezuela, more than, more than two, two million, million people, people have fled the anguish, anguish inflicted by the socialist Maduro, Maduro regime and its and Cuban, Cuban sponsors. sponsors. 
Not long ago, Venezuela was one of the richest countries on Earth. Today, socialism has bankrupted the oil-rich nation and driven its people into... Do you think that these people believe him? This guy's whispering, they make these faces like, holy shit, man, we've got to listen to this. Another fucking American leader whining through his teeth. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry for cursing. Well, sometimes circumstances just get you to curse. And you've got these awake truther Trump supporters who are all for this guy. And he's just another psychopathic criminal thug working to take over countries. It's so, you know, it's so in our face. It's so clear now. It, it couldn't be more clear. You know, the, uh, the total absence of moral character, the total absence of any moral character in the United States government shames every American. And I feel ashamed of being an, an American. I feel ashamed. I don't, I don't want to be associated with Americans anymore. I don't want to be associated with these psychopaths and then surrounded by ordinary Americans with their psychopathic narcissistic tendencies. I don't want to be I don't want to be a citizen of the evil empire. And that's why I just have to post these videos and speak out. Oh, my hands are tied completely. I've been destroyed. So many millions of Americans have been thoroughly destroyed. Killed off because we are saturated in poisons from food, air, water. Um, financially ruined because of our criminal governments, not just federal, local, and state. And yet, those who are comfortable don't care about those who are not. They're fellow Americans. So I get the connection between how we behave in life and how our government behaves. But most Americans don't. They're still caught in their delusion. I like believing that this nation is great and that the majority of the American people are good. They don't even understand what good means. Good for Americans means, oh, um, you're nice. Uh, you're, you work hard, you pay your bills on time, um, you uh, don't bother anybody, you're non-confrontational. <gasps> oh, confront anybody and, ooh, man, you have really bad behavior. And yet they lie, they live a lie, and they think they're good. Good is defined by how you live, not what you think, not what you say about yourself, and it sure has nothing to do with being nice and non-confrontational. Yeah, we're a sick people. So <laughs> here he is, putting more sanctions on Venezuela. It corrupted, it corrupted the oil-rich oil nation and driven, and driven its, its people. people. Into, into abject. abject. Oh my God! Listen to this or shit. Poverty. Poverty. Virtually, Virtually everywhere, everywhere socialism, socialism or communism has been, has been tried. tried. It has, it produced, has produced suffering, suffering corruption, corruption, and decay. And decay. Now, leaders like Trump have produced suffering and decay in your country. Who does Trump appoint? as the special envoy to Venezuela.
Elliot's, Elliot's passion, passion for the, for the rights and liberties of all people makes him a perfect fit and a valuable and timely addition. On January 25th, we couldn't be more psychopathic. Elliot Abrams. You know anything about Elliot Abrams? Let's see. Elliot Abrams, Trump's pick to bring democracy to Venezuela, has spent his life crushing democracy. A Salvadorian military unit on December 11, 1981, created and trained by the U.S. Army, began slaughtering everyone they could find in a remote village called El Mozot. Um, Sorry if I've mispronounced that. Before murdering the women and girls, the soldiers raped them repeatedly, including some as young as 10 years old. They were trained by the U.S. Army. Oh, Carol, come on. Our soldiers don't do that. Is this not reminding you of something that happened in Vietnam? So... Yeah, the soldiers raped them repeatedly, including some as young as 10 years old, and joked that their favorites were the 12 years old, 12 year olds. One witness described a soldier tossing a three year old child into the air and impaling him with his bayonet. The final death toll was over 800 people. The next day, December 12, was the first day on the job for Elliot Abrams as Assistant Secretary of State for Human Rights and Humanitarian Affairs. In the Reagan administration, Abrams snapped into action, helping to lead a cover-up of the massacre. News reports of what had happened, Abrams told the Senate, were not credible, and the whole thing was being significantly misused as propaganda by anti-government guerrillas. Yes, it's Maduro. Get rid of him. You should listen to what this psychopath said. Floor, floor to, to those, council those council members, members who wish to make statements. statements. The United, the United States, States, States has the floor. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. President, 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 members, members of the Security, Security Council. Good afternoon. Thank you, Thank to, you to Under Secretary DiCarlo, DiCarlo for her very sobering, sobering and comprehensive, comprehensive briefing. briefing. We are here, we are here today because of the de facto Maduro regime's refusal to allow, to allow humanitarian aid to enter Venezuela on February 23rd, 23rd which... Humanitarian aid has been weaponized. It is a tool. It is military action. Humanitarian aid is military action against a sovereign nation. We use humanitarian aid so we don't have to declare war. Americans, you know this. You know this and you're letting it happen again. Led to, Led to deaths, injuries, 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 and violence on two international, international borders. borders. Those actions, Those actions once, once again showed the true, the true intentions, intentions and nature, and nature of the Maduro regime. regime. Armed, Armed gangs, gangs thugs, thugs, and criminals, and criminals released, released from prisons, from prisons were, mobilized were mobilized to control, control the border. border. Their actions, Their actions led, led to the burning of humanitarian, of humanitarian assistance rather, rather than its, its protection. protection. Bullshit, okay? It was the opposition forces. It was not Maduro who burned those uh, aid trucks. And this guy is a lying psychopathic. He disgusts me when I see his face. He is a disgusting, despicable creature. How do these people continue to have power? This guy was convicted. In God, I can't remember it, but he was pardoned by Bush, pardoned by another psychopath, Bush, and now Trump appoints him to be this special envoy, ambassador to Venezuela. And we still have Trump supporters going rah rah. Well, I'm sorry to say this. It means that you are diseased, you are sick, you're mentally ill, you need to face what you're doing here. Supporting this guy, Trump. You need to really look at what you're doing. The choice of Abrams sends a clear message to Venezuela and the world. The Trump administration intends to brutalize Venezuela 
while producing a stream of unctuous rhetoric about America's love for democracy and human rights. Combining these two factors, the brutality and the unctuousness, is Abrams' core competency. I will link below to all of it. I don't know how much I can say anymore. Florida McKee is post a video saying that, well, he's going to be switching to the Antarctica, getting off Venezuela. But how much, how many times can you repeat yourself? This is the same play we have seen, the same movie we have seen in so many countries. The same script, the same disgusting, despicable subhumans that are put in charge to bring down these nations. We watch it over and over and over again. Do the American people need to change? Yes. They need to change. They need to grow up. They need to mature. They need to act like responsible adults. Get to doing some research to find out what the truth is, not only going on in Venezuela and other nations, but how about what's going on in our nation? Because these people are bringing in a new world order, and these people are destroying our own sovereignty, and these people are destroying our rights that are, that are just, they are inalienable to every human. It is because the American people have gotten on their knees and said, I will be your slave. I will be your slave. Go ahead, masters, do whatever the hell you want to do. There's no way of stopping this. I am sorry. I am sorry for what our nation does to other nations. These sick, twisted, despicable, disgusting. They're filth. And we, I guess, just don't care. It's heartbreaking to see how low we have become here. But I'm sure that I'm speaking for a lot of Americans who are very aware and very upset and uh, that actually do care. But our voice is not loud enough. Our voice can't trump the Trump supporters, the Christians who sit back and do nothing, the people who just don't care about anything. Our voice is, the volume is very low.